Finley launches it in. They go in search of a goal. It's brilliantly plucked out from under the crossbar. And the referee calls a halt. There's a great take by Daryl Flynn right on his goal line. Monaghan's championship over for another year. And the photographers not around Kieran McGeaney. They're around and have swarmed around Seamus McEnany. Is this the end of the road after six years in charge? Kieran McGeaney not showing an awful lot of emotion. His team have done what they came here to do and they have booked their place for the third successive year in the All-Ireland quarterfinals. The full-time score here at Croke Park. Kildare 115, Monaghan 111. Very disappointed with our last two performances. Uh, you know, we're in a real good chance today at halftime again, one point down. I uh, would have felt we would have come out fighting the second half, but uh, basically for that 10-minute uh, period, uh, it was a 10-minute period in the second half, uh, Kildare overrun us and, and uh, just got tagged on maybe five or six points. I remember we had to go eight or nine clear and it was the, the mountain was uh, too big to climb after that. Monaghan started off fairly sprightly, but we had a bundle of chances like, you know, to pull away in the first half. You know, but they kept at it, which was a good sign. Like, you know, and eventually got the ball over the bar to win a point ahead and then begin the second half, like they sort of ramped it up a wee bit. Like, and, you know, it was good to see it. Kevin, highlights tend to show the scores and good scores, but Kildare, apart from the good scores, they had a shocking number of wides. They had, and uh, this is a recurring team with them now throughout the qualifiers. I think one, one, one of the qualifiers had 22 wides on the night, 16 this time around. <laughs> it's enough to kill most teams, but the problem I, I feel with Kildare is their, their shooting position and the options are never clever. You know, there's a bit of... Now, you should be getting these. They're not, by nature accurate forwards. They wouldn't be what I'd call naturally accurate forwards. Smith and Kavanagh are accurate. Yeah, but a, 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 as a whole they're not. They're, they're, they're John Doyle's not bad, like. Some of the choices they're making, Joe, I think. I'm not like, sure I'm with you, Kevin, on that point. I think it might be that the shot selection at times, you know, they, they can be very ambitious, but... Well, look at that, Eamon Callan in front of the goal and no, putting yeah. it wide. And the whole, the whole thing I want to contrast is what got them back into the game, actually, they started shooting from serious distance. Daryl Flynn, James Cavan are going to have a look at Ian McCallan again is going to get, get a massive... But to me, Des, I have to say, there's a touch of the Hail Marys about some of those, those well, shots. No doubt. No you know, doubt. I mean, these guys, you just wouldn't be scoring from that distance in a regular season, especially if there's pressure being put on you. That's, about, that's Bolton's one. That's about mm. the most naturally kicked one of it. And I suppose the point I'm trying to develop is that the good teams are working the ball in to a closer zone all the time where it's easier to get the score. Is this, you know, is this the hot zone? Because well, I've been waiting all night. To, <laughs> did, he, pro, did he come up with that hot zone? I'm not sure zone. that I did actually, but okay, yeah, I'll claim that's it. That's the sort of like a video that they're watching a night in at the barracks, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> the hot zone. <laughs> the, score, the, hot the, zone the scoring <laughs> zone. As, and and I, I think we're, we, we've uh, a piece of work here done that, that will show it. It's about 30 metres, that arc, okay? Yeah. Now, the good teams who want to score heavily will get the ball there early, get it in quick, and the players that aren't that skillful can it miss from these positions. Well, Tyrone rarely shoot from anywhere else. I mean, Tyrone's and, scores and are, re- are relatively mundane. At the end of a game, if you saw the, the, the stats for Tyrone scores, they're all well, in front of the goals. Randy Dinks over the bar, and if you keep shooting from these, like this is a brilliant one. This is McMenamin, right? Nah, I don't think so. I'll develop the play. Okay, ball comes off to Dewar. He takes a hit and dumps it back to Gormley. Or, or Dewar, in fact, that one is. And he just flicks it over. Yeah. No pressure, no problem. They rarely score a spectacular score. But then, of course, the whole Tyrone project is about, and it's an insurance policy against but individuals not playing that Now, this is Kavanagh that, scoring you know? from right. just in the area I'm talking about. Now, it's hard, Des. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of good ball retention, a lot of composure to pick out the free man. And it works. And that's why you get the big scores up when you're getting the ball to the right well, guys. It also works, Kevin, if you've got a team that's three or four yards off you. I mean, think of Monaghan in fairness. I, mean, I think Seamus McEnany has, has done a terrific job in Monaghan. Mm-hmm. He's a great Gale. And those Monaghan lads are, are, are genuinely great. Very, very, very good Gales. Vinnie Corey and all those lads. You know, and for them to come into the game six days, I mean, you can imagine what it would be like yeah, put so after much the shattering yeah. defeat they had to Toronto to come, in, mm-hmm. come back to training boys on Tuesday night. I mean, it'd be like a funeral. You know, and then they've got to come to Krug Park on Saturday. Where's the joy in it? Where's the spring in their step? Because if truth be told, their lives were built around winning an Ulster title. This was yeah. going to be it. But and it was such a, a, to a totally emphatic to, destruction to by that. Tyrone. But ultimately that, they weren't good enough to win an Ulster. Yes, but what I'm, saying is, what I'm saying is that the normal Monaghan work ethic and the zeal with which they played through the league 
and, and in the early stages of the championship was totally absent against right. Kildare. So that Kildare were able to do as they wished in the second half without any impediment. I mean, rarely was a man even coming in close enough if he dived to Kildare block a Kildare kick. Kildare move a lot. They're, they're extremely well, they are, they well conditioned, Joe, that. and they will make chances. They make create an that. awful lot of chances. And if they hit a purple patch, they will put up a big score very yeah. quickly. Well, let's look at, at Kildare in the context of the quarter-final draw, which was made this evening, and this is how uh, it ended up. Mead play Kildare, it's Kerry versus Down, Tyrone versus Dublin, and Roscommon versus Cork. So Kildare going in against Mead now. Well, a couple of interesting things. The first one I would say is, what reaction uh, will Mead have to the controversy surrounding the Leinster final? I mean, that night they went home, I doubt the felt like the one of Leinster. It was a tough one for them, not of their making. Yeah, but it's uh, behind them now, isn't it? Oh, they're well, they're well, mine now well, next week. Well, the said it was behind them as well, Des. It, it wasn't. Yeah. So ultimately, we'll have to wait and see. Um, what I, Meath should have done was offer them a replay. I have no doubt that Meath would have beaten Louth in a replay. No doubt whatsoever. They would have got the first day out of their system. They would have come out of this as the good guys. They would have felt good about themselves and they would have been on the crest of a wave. As it is, I, I just think that there's a fair bit of baggage coming into this game. And, and it's not a draw that Meath would have wanted. Mm. Yeah. So it's essentially a momentum team, Kildare, meeting a, a, a Meath team whose form was iffy. Like they had a shocker of a second half in the Leinster final. They collapsed, in fact. And their mm. top players that they would have been relying on didn't cut so it. So you, you fancy Kildare here, do you? Well, I, I do, I'd have to say, because we're basing on this on the Dublin match. And the night we actually looked at that, they got three goals that night. Yeah. They're you know, body blows that actually should have been freezed in the opposite direction. So they killed the, the, the match. They play from, at a high tempo, you yeah. know. And, I mean... The thing about Meath is that they can manufacture goals and with Cain Ward's freeze and all of that, they can certainly get the scores. But Kildare do play at a very high tempo and mentally I think they're probably in a slightly better situation than Meath right. are at the moment. I think the funny thing about this Meath team is that Meath teams all through the years had steel. You know, the great team yeah. that Giles and Garrett and all were in then, the one before that with Colin O'Rourke. This particular Meath team all right. is just a uh, lot softer yeah. than that. You know? All right then, let's move it on. Kerry down. Down have always performed well against Kerry in the Championship. Tradition only takes you a certain amount of the way. I mean, I was talking to Colin O'Rourke about this, I mean, about Meath tradition. Meath tradition was great as long as they had Trevor Giles, yeah. Graham, Garrett, McDermott in previous years, Colin O'Rourke, Bernie Flynn, Brian Stafford. You know, it's just not the same, you know, with down now because they don't have Greg Blaney and Ross Carr and James McCartan and all these Boys, there's no doubt that 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 Kerry they're well Paul improved. Galvin it's and a, I appreciate they're well, vulnerable, but not, for not vulnerable enough. Not vulnerable enough. I don't think for Down to beat them. But it's a great draw for Down. Down have had all a great right. year. It's a great building year for them. James McCartan's learning a lot. The team's improving all the time. Great draw for them. All right. And if Kerry win, they will play the winners of Kildare or Mead. So that. Yeah, you'd have to, it's kind of shaping well. up a little yeah. bit towards Curry oh. already, you'd have to oh, say it is. Oh, yeah. Well, let's stick with quarterfinals. The Dubs and Tyrone. Tyrone, for a change, will be hot favourites instead of Dublin. Well, I mean, I'd say that the, the Dubs would be gasping a bit at that, at that draw. I mean, I think it's a good draw for the Dubs. I think Pat Kilroy has been very realistic. I was just very disappointed and surprised with what happened in the Wexford game because I thought they had put those sorts of collapses behind them. But that was that was four games ago or five. Yeah, you know, I do ago. I do yeah. appreciate that, yeah. and there is no doubt that a wee run on the qualifiers, yeah. even a run like theirs against sort of lesser yeah. opposition, as it, it's good for you and it's good for confidence. Yeah. But you know, the, Tyrone are, are different than everybody yeah. else. They play a different game than everyone else. I mean, for example. A good snapshot of them came in the second half against Monaghan. Yeah. First five minutes of the second half, first ten minutes. Monaghan had to score. Tyrone swamped the defence. They knew that. The first five Monaghan attacks, Tyrone actually took the ball off them. I mean, I do believe that Postman Pat could play corner back for Tyrone and he wouldn't be exposed. And, of course, they have, they have, they have found the solution to the age-old problem. How do you defend in numbers and yet attack in numbers? How do you defend in numbers and yet not, need, not leave your attack light? And if you mark an in, right. any particular individual, it doesn't seem to make any difference. All right. And Postman Pat, unlikely to start, A and other perhaps, but Ross Common, have they any chance against Cork? No. No. I think the question, <laughs> you're asking me, the, the, the question, have they any chance again? Look, everybody always has a chance. If yeah. Cork turned up poisonous, you know, and didn't recover from what is particularly bad form the last few matches, but they have so much to do, Roscommon, in terms of, 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 I would say, limiting it and trying to make it tough on Cork. It's the draw from hell from them. Okay, which wasn't going to be easy, I suppose, for them. But look, at, unfortunately, we're out of time. Our understanding, by the way, is 
while the details will be announced tomorrow, that we'll have a double header on Saturday and Sunday in Croke Park with those quarterfinals. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us, Joe and Kevin. Pleasure, uh, I'll be back with you next week at the same time. So until then, from all of us here on the team, have a good week. We'll see you then. Bye bye.